Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Dr. Macy Smith. Today, we're gonna to start part one of a four part series on unpacking senior engagement activities. Listen, we know during this time of uncertainty, it's very important to keep our older adult loved ones and our seniors engaged, but how do you do that? So I did what any uh, advocate and professional would do in this industry, and I reached out to some partners who are really, really good at engagement activities for seniors. I partnered with Lexington Medical Center Extended Care, and they were so gracious to donate the time and the talents of their certified activity professionals. And so today we're going to hear from Amber Steele and also Stephanie Martin. Amber has five years of experience as an advanced activity professional board certified. And Stephanie Martin is a 12 year veteran in the industry. She's an activity director certified. And what they're gonna do is talk to us about activities, reminiscent activities, engagement activities that are designed specifically for individuals who have Alzheimer's disease. So it's gonna be good. Let's welcome them to the session. <laughs> what doing, right? Hi, Amber and Stephanie. Hi. How are y'all today? Pretty good. How about you? So from my understanding, you all are going to share with us the most appropriate, engaging, reminiscent activities that are ideal for those living with Alzheimer's and dementia, correct? Yes, ma'am. Correct. Now, and both of you actually work in the Alzheimer's space at your facility. So you have a lot of experience in this. Well, wonderful. So I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, um, I'm going to go first. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the my personal um, experience in taking care of my grandmother who had Alzheimer's uh, in her own home. So uh, we try to incorporate activities into our daily routine, easy tasks for focus on familiarity and accomplishments. Like for example, after I would fix breakfast for her and wash the dishes, I would have her dry the dishes. Um, we also would take the uh, silverware out of the tray and I'd have her, you know, wipe it out for me and we organize all the silverware back in the tray. Very simple task. Um, we'd also, I'd, ha I'd always ask her to help me, you know, help me grandmother. I need you to help me organize these things and have her match the plastic with the lids. Um, we did that and that would take a while to put all the lids together. And um, some of the other things she liked was uh, these greeting cards. Um, some of them were, deli you know, to her, and some were just plain, and she loved, and also postcards. She loved just going through them, reading them. Sometimes we'd stuff the envelope, sometimes we'd take them out, um, and that she really enjoyed looking at all those and talking about who sent them and how she knew them, um, rolling yarn. That's something she had tons of. Um, now, the men are a little more difficult, I think, sometimes, but uh, one of the things we did for my grandfather is uh, we had uh, his tools in his workspace. We had the board that we put the pegs on and shapes and let him organize his tools. So that was something that um, he enjoyed doing and, you know, kind of task-oriented things like walking with me to the mailbox to get the mail walking out to get that newspaper, uh, fill in the bird feeder, things like that. Um, another thing that we did was uh, my grandparents were big into, you know, being involved in the community and the churches. So uh, one of the things one of our local uh, charity does is they take the regular plastic bags and they have people to double stuff them and, you know, just do them like that and fold them. And we take the whole pile at the end uh, to the charity and they use them for, for bagging their items. Um, and there's a lot you could do, flyers, uh, mailers, help them do that kind of stuff. They can do at home and take back and then they can send out. So there's a lot of things you can do to help other people and um you know they really like that so i'm going to turn it over to amber oh okay well i was going to talk about some of the things that we do in the facility 
as we are on the dementia Alzheimer's unit, we have a lot of wandering. And so to help them keep busy, keep them from wandering and exit seeking, um, some of the things that they love to do is folding laundry, folding towels. We have a bunch of baby clothes and they love to uh, fold baby clothes and they'll pick them up and like, oh, look how cute, look at this baby, so cute, you know? So um, they like to do that. And then we also have a basket full of uh, different colored socks with different designs. And so they like to match those up. Um, some of them, you know, they can't play cards like they used to. So we have regular size cards and then you can also get a jumbo deck of cards so they can see them if they're hard to see. And instead of trying to get them to understand how to play a regular game of cards, maybe you could tell them, you know, sort by the suit or sort by the color, which is one thing that, that's another thing that men really like to do. They really like to do that. And then let's see, basically anything with sorting, anything that's colorful that they can sort by color, they really enjoy doing. Um, another thing they like to do is a 24 piece puzzle. I found that anything bigger than that uh, can be really hard for them to do. But um, we have found some adult ones on Amazon, uh, 24 pieces. And then of course, uh, they love music. I mean, music can solve all your problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially if you know the resident or know your family member, you know what they like. A lot of times, if you specify the music to them and their liking, they'll sit and sing, dance, you know, have a good time, especially if they're in a bad mood. If you start singing and dancing, that'll really lift their spirit. Um, another thing that we find a lot in our facility is uh, they fidget a lot when they have dementia, maybe pull on their clothes or pick at their skin. And so our volunteers actually made these, but I know a lot of people can sew and, you know, make something like this. This is a fidget. And so like you can see, it has all kinds of, it's got bells, it's got chains you can pull on, a little mirror that has like a reflecting shine on it, beads, ribbons, uh, hair clippy snap thing. And then on the back, it has all these different types of uh, materials to feel. Like there's silk, there's felt, you know, they really like that. And then there's another one that they can actually put on their hand and um, play with. This is another one for like the men and it's got all kinds of little, you know, something easy. You can either make it yourself or order on Amazon or, and it's just got all kinds of little buttons and things like that to mess with. Yeah. I, um, the men really like, we used to have one that, uh, it had different screws and you could screw on the bolt. Um, they yeah, really like the doing that. And I was like, stuff. I can't do this. My daddy's not here. Will you please help me? I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And they'll do it for you. And they, um, men also really like to untie knots for you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thankful. <laughs> Let's see. And maybe if none of this is working and they just need some one-on-one -on -one attention from you, if they're really upset or it's really hard for you to get them to stop wandering, a thing me and Stephanie both like to do is just take them by the hand. Maybe not right now because we're on this COVID precaution, but put some gloves on. <laughs> and um, hold, hold their hand and just walk with them. Uh, we like to, while we're walking, have conversations, especially when the weather's nice, we would walk around our um, garden as a path and we'd walk with them and hold their hand and just talk about the scenery. And we found that really helps them relax, especially being outside. Oh, I forgot, almost forgot to tell you about the baby. I'm probably going over it. <laughs> the, um, our dementia, Alzheimer's residents really love taking care of the babies. I mean, mm -hmm. and don't you walk by holding the baby like this. Uh, you, you'll, they'll pull you and spank you. And, <laughs> you know, you'd have an earful. But they really love taking care of the babies and making sure the babies are good. I think it's some, a comfort for them to hold them. Mm -hmm. And then not everybody's a baby person. So we also have for real pets that they really love playing with and holding and petting. And of course these move and um, meow or they bark, you know, depending on what animal you have. And they just, they're, they just light up when they see it moving and purring. They're like, oh, she loves me. I'm like, yes, yeah, she does. And I'm like, what should we name the kitten? And they'll sh tell you a name. So that's just a couple of things that we like to do with our residents here in the facility. 
So I'm not embarrassed to say that I've seen those real pets and I love those real pets. Right? I'm not scared of pets per se. I just get real jittery around them. And so I love those, you call them what, real pets is what they're called? For real pets, yeah. For real pets. I like that. And so, you know, I think it's very important um, for us to start our uh, unpacking senior engagement activities with those who are living with Alzheimer's and dementia, because we know that the pandemic has probably been uh, the hardest on them because of their cognitive impairment or depending on who the resident is or who the person is, because we have to be person centered, depending on who they, they are, maybe it hadn't been so bad because they forget most recent events and most recent activities. What is the tone and tenor in the Alzheimer's and dementia um, community there where you are? Are they okay? Which I know they're okay, but um, what happens when they get anxious? I know that you all put in place these tactile items. I love the fact that that blanket is very tactile and has different things that they can feel and touch. And it's also reminiscent. It actually looks like a, a a blanket that my grandmama would make for all of us, like kind of patchwork. And then for the men, you're totally right. It has to be something different from the men. Everything is reminiscent or um, it, it, it absolutely reflects their life before, you know, and you put it in a safe manner. Outside of offering these engagement activities to them, how are they feeling? How are they doing? And how is the staff doing? Um. I think that with the we have been FaceTiming their families, mm -hmm. and I think that really helps them some. Even though uh, they're having a hard time really understanding, you know, the you're supposed to look at the screen. Here's your daughter talking to you. Even if they're not looking at them on the screen, they can hear them. Yeah. And they'll, uh, you know, talk to them, tell them how they're feeling. Uh, some of our residents, you know, in the afternoon during their sundowning, they're ready to go home. Yeah. And so if their families aren't able to visit right now. Uh, we do most of our calls in the afternoon when they're mm -hmm. ready to go home. They're looking for their daughter. They're looking for their husband. So that's, um, that, that's the time that we do our FaceTime so that they can talk to them and give them some type of comfort. And then um, one of my ladies, she always asks for her daughter in the afternoon. And her daughter will um, always tell her what she's doing. And so after they hang up, you know, she goes back to asking about her. And I'll tell her, oh, yeah, she's at the pool with the grandkids. She'll, she'll be here later. And I seems to ease their mind a bit. It's always about meeting them where they are. Right. And acknowledging their fears and their needs. You're, you're exactly, exactly right. Well, hey, I mean, if we had people like you in all the Alzheimer's communities and everybody would just be golden. Oh. Uh, right, Stephanie? <laughs> well, I, and I, I appreciate the work that y'all are doing. Go ahead, Stephanie. Thank you. I was just going to say, uh, well, that we haven't really been uh, explaining the depth of, you know, what's going on. We, I kind of just say the flu because it's some, you know, the flu is something they understand. Yeah. So I just, yeah, you know, we're seeing this mask and all that just to protect us from getting a cold or getting the flu because that's something, you know, that it's, it's, it's a sickness, but it's not scary. And that's something that they can relate to. So that's as far as explaining to them what's going on. And it's interesting because when you ask them how they're feeling, they look at you and they, well, honey, how are you? Yes. Because you're, you're wearing the gloves and the mask. Know, you're I'm the one who looks sick. How you <laughs> doing? Boy, can they not put something into perspective? Yeah. I know, right. Sometimes yeah. they're too truthful. I know, make you feel like, yeah, like this. Well, thank y'all, thank y'all so much for for sharing these uh, innovative strategies and these cool ideas that can be implemented by anyone in any setting, at home or in a community. I often tell family caregivers too because they can't, we still can't go see them here in South Carolina. Um, offer suggestions to the staff because staff are overwhelmed as well. They need recommendations. They need suggestions. It, suggestions. It is a team effort. Um, do you all have uh, any like documentation or uh, to do step by step on how to develop some of those things or even where to purchase the for real pets? Yeah, um, I think Debbie normally, I think she gets them on Amazon or eBay. She gets a lot on eBay. Okay, um, cool. Pets, you know, at um, any toy, toy store, Walmart, Kmart, they all have them. Okay. 
and the fidgets now our volunteers made them so if you know anybody who can sew they can make them but i'm sure you can um uh, get them on pinterest uh, the, oh, the instructions cool. on and, and, and what, what what is it called will do it too what did like, you say uh, stephanie if you reach out to church groups and explain kind of what you need because they a lot of them have those quilting groups and things like That's that true. and they're always looking for and, and and outreach to to work and help out that, that those are excellent suggestions now what is that blanket called again uh, a fidget a fidget, a fidget. Uh, apron, or you can you can get an apron where it goes on like an apron, so they don't pull on their clothes. Okay. Or blanket, or I think this is just a little fidget, like a lap a lap pad. Okay. Another okay. thing they like is the gel lap pads. They're just uh, like a gel material, and they just like to squeeze, almost like a stretch ball, but it's in a pad. Feeling. Right. Because we That's like to do those things, the same things that we like to do to relieve our, to relieve our anxiety and our stress. They do the same thing. It just needs to be in a safe manner. So thank you ladies so much. This has been very helpful. And we're gonna drop some comments in the set, in the um, drop some information in the comment section. So that way anybody who wants more information about the things that you all presented, we're gonna make sure that they have them. You know, you guys, you can drop your email address or uh, send me a direct message and I'll get you the information that you need. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope you'll join us next Monday at one o'clock. Thank you ladies. Bye. Bye.